how it's made noodles, pasta, and mac and cheese. There is something many people never stop to consider, from a simple bowl of noodles, to spaghetti night, to a box of mac and cheese, these are comfort foods for millions, they're a quick meal on a busy night and a taste of childhood. The global pasta industry alone is a massive, multi-billion dollar business, but have you ever wondered how these simple foods are made on such an enormous scale? Today, we step inside colossal factories to uncover the process behind noodles, pasta, and mac and cheese. In these places thousands of tons of raw wheat are turned into finished food every single day. It's a system of machines, chemistry, and culinary science, all working with incredible precision. Prepare to see the journey from a single grain of wheat to your kitchen table, a process so large that for just one famous brand, it produces over a million boxes of mac and cheese every single day. Section 1. The Golden Standard, The Making of Pasta Our journey begins where all pasta does, with wheat, but this isn't just any wheat. True pasta comes from durum wheat, and it's chosen for a few key reasons. Durum wheat is very hard and has a high protein content. This protein is what creates a strong, elastic network called gluten. It's the backbone that gives pasta its famous al dente bite and helps it hold its shape after cooking. The kernels have a natural amber color, which gives the final pasta its golden look. Before the wheat even enters the factory, it goes through strict quality control. Trucks carrying tons of it are sampled and tested in a lab for protein, moisture, and impurities. Only the shipments that pass are moved into giant climate-controlled silos that protect the grain. The first real step happens in the cleaning house. The raw wheat is full of dust, chaff, and other debris from the field. A series of machines uses screens and air currents to remove the big pieces. Then, large vibrating tables called gravity separators shake out small stones. In the most advanced factories, optical sorters scan every single kernel. High-speed cameras and tiny puffs of air instantly remove any discolored or damaged grains. Only the best ones move on. Once cleaned, the wheat goes through a critical step called conditioning. The kernels are still too hard and brittle for milling. To fix this, a precise amount of water is added. This softens the outer bran layer while toughening the starchy part inside, called the endosperm. The wheat then rests for hours. This balance is the secret to a clean separation during milling, making it easier to peel away the bran without breaking the valuable endosperm. Now the wheat is ready to become semolina. The goal here isn't to make a fine powder like bread flour, but a coarse granular product. The kernels enter a series of roller mills. These steel cylinders have grooved surfaces and rotate at different speeds. They don't crush the wheat, they crack it open, shearing the endosperm away from the bran. From there, the mix of bran, germ, and endosperm is sent to massive multi-story machines called planzifters. Inside, stacks of sieves shake in a circular motion, sorting the particles by size. The larger pieces are sent back to the rollers, while the finer particles move to a machine called a purifier. Here, shaking sieves and upward air currents work together. The lighter brand particles are lifted away by the air, while the heavier pure semolina granules fall through. This process is repeated until the maximum amount of pure semolina is extracted. The result is a stream of golden, granular semolina, ready for the next stage. The heart of the pasta factory is the mixing room. Here the semolina is fed into enormous industrial mixers. Purified water is added in precise amounts. For some pastas, egg powder might be included for extra richness and color. The mixture is then kneaded by large, powerful blades. This kneading develops the gluten network, creating the long, elastic chains that give pasta its strength. In modern factories, this entire process is done under a vacuum. Pumps remove air from the mixing chamber which prevents tiny air bubbles from getting trapped in the dough. Those bubbles can create weak spots in the final pasta. The result is a firm, uniform, golden dough ready to be shaped. The shaping of the pasta is where the magic happens. The dough is fed into a machine called an extruder, which is basically a large screw inside a barrel. The screw forces the dough forward, building up immense pressure. At the end of the barrel is a die, a plate with precisely cut openings that create the pasta's shape. The material of this die is critical. Many mass-produced pastas use Teflon-coated dyes because they are faster. However, premium pasta makers often use bronze dyes. As the dough is forced through the softer bronze, it creates microscopic ridges on the noodle's surface. 
This rough texture is the secret to a perfect dish, as it helps the sauce cling to the pasta instead of sliding off. The variety of shapes is almost endless. For long cuts like spaghetti, the pasta comes out vertically and is draped over long rods. For short shapes like penny, rotating blades slice the pasta as it emerges. For macaroni, your a curved, iron curved die creates the familiar elbow shape. Once shaped, the pasta is still soft and full of moisture. To make it shelf stable, it must be dried slowly and carefully. Racks of fresh pasta move into huge, climate controlled drying chambers. These are long tunnels where temperature and humidity are precisely managed for hours, sometimes up to a full day for thicker shapes. If the pasta dries too fast, it will crack. If it dries too slowly, it can spoil. The goal is to reduce the moisture from around 30% down to about 12%. This process locks in that al dente quality. After drying, the pasta moves along conveyor belts to the packaging area. For short pasta, computerized scales drop the exact weight into bags or boxes at incredible speed. Long pasta like spaghetti is carefully weighed and packaged, sometimes by robotic arms. At every stage, samples are pulled and tested for everything from color to cooking performance. Nothing is left to chance. Finally the boxes are cased, stacked by robots and moved to the warehouse, ready to be shipped around the world. Section 2. The Instant Marvel. The Making of Noodles. Now we shift our focus to a different global staple. The Instant Noodle. The market for instant noodles is enormous, expected to be worth over $62 billion in 2025. This food was born out of a need for convenience and its production is a marvel of food engineering. Like pasta it begins with wheat flour, but here the flour is mixed with water, salt, and a key ingredient called kansui. Kansui is an alkaline mineral water, which gives ramen noodles their signature yellow color, firm texture, and unique flavor. In a huge mixer, the ingredients are kneaded into a stiff dough. From there, the dough isn't extruded. Instead, it enters a series of sheeting presses. It's fed between pairs of heavy rollers, and with each pass, it's pressed thinner, developing the gluten and creating a continuous sheet of dough. What begins as a thick slab of dough becomes a delicate sheet, just a millimeter thick. This sheet of dough then passes through a slitter, which is a set of rotating blades that cut it into strands. To create the iconic wavy pattern, the conveyor belt moving the noodles away from the slitter runs slightly slower than the noodles are being cut. This causes the strands to bunch up and form waves, which prevents the final block from becoming a solid mass. Once cut, the raw noodles cannot survive long in storage. First, they pass through steaming tunnels where jets of vapor cook them at 100 degrees Celsius for 1 to 5 minutes. This step pre-cooks the noodles and makes them digestible. It's what makes them instant. After steaming, the noodles are portioned into individual serving sizes and folded into the familiar square or round block shape. Now, we arrive at the step that makes most instant noodles different from any pasta. Flash frying. The noodle blocks are submerged in hot oil, usually between 140 and 160 degrees Celsius, for just one to two minutes. This flash frying is ingenious for two reasons. First, the intense heat instantly vaporizes the water rapidly dehydrating the noodles. The moisture content drops from around 30-50% to as low as 2-5%. This is what makes them so shelf-stable. Second, as the water escapes, it leaves behind a network of tiny pores throughout the noodle. This porous structure is the secret to their instant nature. When you add hot water, it rushes into these pores, rehydrating the noodles in minutes. After frying, the hot blocks of noodles travel through a cooling tunnel. Blasts of cool air bring them down to room temperature, preparing them for packaging. While this is happening, the flavor packet is being made. It's a complex blend of salt, sugar, dehydrated vegetables, and spices, all mixed in giant tumblers. Specialized machines dispense the powder into small foil packets and heat seal them. Finally, the noodle blocks and seasoning packets meet at the packaging line. For packet noodles, which make up the majority of the market, a machine drops a noodle block and a flavor sachet onto a plastic film, which is then folded and sealed. For cup noodles, the block is dropped into a cup, seasoning is sprinkled on top, and a foil lid is sealed on. Hundreds of packages are finished every minute, scanned by check weighers and x-ray machines, and sent to the warehouse. Section 3. The Ultimate Comfort Food. The Making of Mac and Cheese. Finally we arrive at what many call the king of comfort food. 
macaroni, and cheese. The industrial production of the famous Blue Box variety is a story of two separate processes that come together at the end. One company sells more than a million boxes of this product every single day. The first part of the equation is the macaroni. Its production follows the same exact principles as other pasta. It starts with high-quality durum wheat semolina, mixed with water, and kneaded under a vacuum. The dough is then fed into an extruder. To create the elbow curve, a simple engineering trick is used. The flow of dough through the dye is made intentionally uneven, causing the pasta to naturally curve as it comes out. A rotating blade then cuts it to length. Just like other pasta, the fresh macaroni is transported to large drying chambers. For hours, it's cured in a controlled environment to remove moisture without cracking the delicate shapes. After drying, the finished macaroni is stored in silos, waiting for the next step. While the pasta is being made, a completely different process is creating the cheese sauce powder. Turning real cheese into a shelf-stable powder is a feat of food science. The process often begins with large blocks of real cheese like cheddar. They are melted down and blended with milk proteins, salt, and emulsifying salts, which ensure a smooth, creamy texture later on. Natural colorings like annatto or paprika are often added to get that signature bright orange hue. This liquid cheese mixture is then dehydrated using a method called spray drying. The liquid is atomized into a fine mist inside a massive drying tower. A blast of hot air instantly evaporates the water from the tiny droplets, leaving behind a fine dry powder that falls to the bottom. This powder has a very long shelf life. The grand finale happens on the packaging line. The blue boxes are formed from flat cardboard. On one line, the dried macaroni is weighed and dropped into each box. On another, the cheese powder is sealed into foil packets. A machine then drops a packet into the box with the macaroni. The box is sealed, coated, and sent on its way. Optical scanners and check weighers inspect every box to make sure both parts are there and the weight is correct. Any box that fails is automatically rejected. From there robotic arms stack the boxes into cases ready to be shipped out. To conclusion. From the golden fields of wheat, through the forces of milling and extrusion, the hot bath of the fryer and the science of spray drying, we've seen how simple ingredients are transformed into the world's favorite comfort foods. It shows how ordinary foods are never simple. They are systems of machines, people, and choices that shape what we eat every day. The next time you make a pot of spaghetti, a bowl of instant noodles, or a box of mac and cheese, you'll know the incredible journey it took. Now that you've seen how it's made, do you think using a bronze dye really makes a difference for pasta? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and if you want to uncover more factory secrets, subscribe now so you never miss the next journey.